Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudey. I'm one of the consultants in reproductive medicine and surgery and assisted conception in the Homerton Fertility Centre. And I have tried to do this slightly outdoors, just giving a different type of feel to the entire video. Now, one of the things which I'm going to talk to you today is about difficult embryo transfers. It's important to realize that of all the maneuvers that we do in embryo transfers and in a collection, embryo transfer tends to have a success rate dependent on the maneuvers that we do, which makes it one of the most crucial steps. Those of who do embryo transfers will realize that the more practice you have, you start getting better and better. On the other hand, when you start doing embryo transfers, your pregnancy rate tends to go down. And that's one of the reasons why my trainees, by the time they leave my center, would have done close to 200 to 300 embryo transfers, getting them to a success rate of between 30 and 40 percent, which is very essential if you want to run your own IVF unit. If you're not doing embryo transfers, then try as, you, as much as you may it's very unlikely that you'll be able to retain a good success rate just on good transferring good embryos. So today's paper is a bit different. What it looks at it, it says what happens with difficult embryo transfers. And this was a study which was done on 7,714 embryo transfers, looking at the various maneuvers which could be put in and pregnancy rates were calculated accordingly. And this was published, if you see, in Fertility and Sterility in March 2017. So if you look at the materials and methods, the aim was to prove that embryo transfers are dependent on that technique. IVF fresh or frozen between January 2009 and March 2015 agonist or an antagonist cycle, oocyte recipients were not included, excess embryos were frozen, and that's initially they should use the slow freeze technique and after 2012 moved over to vitrification. Embryo transfers were done on day 2, 3 and 5. Transabdominal scan was performed, the Wallace assure proof catheter was used and the embryos were transferred between 15 to 20 millimeter away from the fungus. When difficulty was encountered, what did they do? First, they removed the inner sheet and resheathed it. So they put the outer sheet and tried to resheath it. If they encountered any resistance at the internal loss, then you had the options. You had the options of using the outer sheet, using the Wallace malleable stylet, using a tenaculum, or inserting a, a histrometer, which I think is a hysteroscope. Embryo retention was calculated, touching the fundus was observed, size of the uterus, and all these were recorded. 7,714 cycles were analyzed, 55.5% were fresh, and 45.5% were frozen. The difficult embryo transfers formed about 7.1% to 7.2% between the fresh and the frozen, and that is within that 10 percent mark that we have. And if you have a look at the difficult embryo transfers, we usually say that it's about 1 in 10 embryo transfers that are difficult. If you look at the live birth rate, which is now interesting, when you had an Easy embryo transfer, the live birth rate was 28%. When you had a difficult embryo transfer, the live birth rate was 19%. Now, let's have a look at this graph. Very interesting. You had no additional maneuvers. That means your embryo transfer went absolutely beautiful. The pregnancy rate was 39.4%. Use the outer sheet and tried to maneuver your catheter, your pregnancy rate dropped to 36.9%. Use a stylet 
where you realize you've been poking around a bit. It's become more difficult. The pregnancy rate further dropped to 31.7%. And then you use a tenaculum. The pregnancy dropped further to 26.1%. And what does it tell you? It tells you that if you have to do an embryo transfer, go in as the patient just does not realize. Have the soft touch. Let your mind and your hand work in synchrony. Let the, the mind be at silence. And this is something which I'll always tell my juniors, is it is like a meditation. You have to be absolutely still when you do the embryo transfer. Now, if you have a look at what happens again, in 2013, there was a systematic review done which showed that if you had a difficult embryo transfer, the pregnancy rates went down. Now, often you would hear somebody would say, my touch is very fine. I can do beautiful transfers. Compare that with ultrasound. Ultrasound proves better for success rate in embryo transfer. Again, does it make a difference that you can visualize the, the installation of the embryos? And evidence suggests that if you visualize the embryo being implanted, then the success rates are better. If you have a poor visualization, then the success rates are lower. Again, if you had embryo retention in the catheter, it did not show any change in pregnancy rate. What if you go directly with the outer inner sheet? Or do you do after loading, where you load the inner sheet above the catheter and there was no difference in pregnancy rates again? What happened if you touched the fundus? Again, in studies demonstrated that there did not seem to be a rise in failure rates. Some studies have shown that if there is blood or if you hit the fundus, pregnancy rates may be slightly lower. What does this tell you? It tells you very clearly that embryo transfer remains the most crucial part of an IVF cycle while replacing embryos. What it requires is practice, practice. And often, I would tell my juniors, start with your IUI procedures. Try and do embryo transfers on your IUI procedures. Very similar, use the same technique. If need be, use the embryo transfer catheter. It's a bit more rigid than the IUI catheter. And it allows you to put your hand, get, getting used to putting in the embryos. At the end, remember, this is one of the most crucial steps to optimize the results. Thank you very much. If you've liked this video, share it, spread the knowledge as much as you can. Thank you.